Hello, my friends, and welcome to St. Alphonsus Church as we gather together for the celebration of the Eucharist. Let us now light our Advent wreath. We have the two candles. We have the first candle, which is for hope, and the second candle, which is for this week, is for faith. And now let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. As we gather together, my friends, we get to hear one of my favorite readings. It's about a f reading from the Gospel of Luke about friendship, and how friendship can bring about healing in the lives of other people. So let's think about how we have been treating our friends. I know that some of you are in school and able to see your friends, and some of you are at home, and so you contact your friends through the internet or over the phone. And in the midst of these challenging days, sometimes we can take our friends for granted, or we may not treat them as best as we should because we're having a hard day and it makes us uncharitable towards others, and it kind of devolves from there. So let us ask for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness so that we may be good friends to one another. Please sing after me, my friends. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. May our prayer of petition rise before you, we pray, O Lord, that with purity unblemished, we, your servants, may come as we desire to celebrate <clears throat> the great mystery of the incarnation of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So, my friends, today we're going to start with a reading from the prophet Isaiah. So, as you will learn, or may have already learned, the role of the prophets is, in salvation history is to bring people back to God. That's because the human nature, we tend to go, we go off track a little bit. So whenever we hear a reading from the prophet of such and such, we know it's going to be a message about trying to draw people back to God. So let's see what the prophet Isaiah has for, to say to us today. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful of heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. And then, then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall be like a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. And the haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. 
No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and singing shall, sorry, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in that reading, my friends, from the prophet Isaiah, we heard how the prophet is reminding people that God is coming and that God can bring life to the desert. Um, so, and he's not, he's really referring to the desert of our hearts, of our souls. Sometimes we get low and depressed and oh, but Isaiah is trying to rem remind us that God is coming. Turn back to God and he will give us new life. So now we'll have our psalm, my friends, and you know this very well, where there's a phrase that we repeat. And uh, so our response, Oriel Psalm, will be, Our God will come to save us. Our God will come to save us. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Our God will come to save us. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. Our God will come to save us. The Lord will give what is good, and our land shall yield in its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Our God will come to save us. And now for my favorite part, my friends, our gospel reading. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day while Jesus was teaching, the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal. Just then, some men came carrying a man who was paralyzed on a bed. They were trying to bring him, him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When, they, when he saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes of the Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questioning, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, Jesus said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately the man stood up before them, took what, had been, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my friends, we hear this beautiful story of friendship today. And it really fits well from our reading from the prophet Isaiah, in that 
Like imagine that you were a paralyzed person and you didn't have use of your arms or your legs. You're totally dependent on other people. And yet, like that would be, oh, I don't know how I would handle that. I would not handle it well. But then, you know, you have these friends who are loyal to you and they hear about this person named Jesus who, and they don't need to fully understand it, but they hear that he can do a miracle. Now, if you're the paralyzed person, there's no way you're going to be able to get there on your own. But these friends say, you know what, we can do this. Let's, let's put you on a little bed to carry you and let's go. You know, what's the worst that, that could happen? You don't get healed. So they pick him up and they start going. And usually with Jesus, he attracted quite a crowd. So when they would approach the house, there would be lots of people around the house and they would have to like find their way through the crowds of people to get to Jesus himself. But the story tells us that there's like so many people that they can't get in. And this is the part that I just love. Like the friends are like, we've come this far. We are not giving up. And so what do they do? They do what no one else had thought, which is to get onto the roof and lower their friend down right in front of Jesus. So he has to see him. You're just like, And Jesus is moved by the determination and faith of the friends. And so he says to the paralyzed man, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now we might be like, well, that's great and all, that's not why we came. But nonetheless, Jesus then heals the man and allows him to get up and walk. Now, some of you may ask, well, why does he forgive sins instead of healing his body first? We have to remember how Jesus thinks. Like, what Jesus values is not always what we value. So for Jesus, he knows that giving us a relationship with his heavenly Father is the best gift ever. That's number one. So whenever we ask him for something, that is will always be his response. That's the first thing he's going to give. Um, And then, next is kind of what we would prefer, or at least the friends in the story would, is for the man to walk. And Jesus does that too. But I find it so um, awesome that Jesus recognizes the faith of the friends, and that is what leads to the healing, not only of forgiveness from sins, but the healing of his body. I think that has a really important message for all of you, my friends. It kind of echoes what we heard in the prophet Isaiah, where there's scenes of like, oh, it's sad. Like there's, they're speaking about a desert and people are lost and it's just kind of low. But the prophet Isaiah is like, no, our God is coming. He can make the desert bloom. He can bring new life to the place where it was thought to be none. He can bring us back and draw us into the communion of love. This is what you are capable of, my friends. Your actions of encouragement and care and gentleness and forgiveness to your friends are like Jesus, are like this message of the prophet Isaiah of bringing healing and peace where before there wasn't. This is what we do. When we strive to be people of goodness and good friends to one another, we bring about these little miracles of love in the lives of others. And so this is one of the great gifts of the second week of Advent is the the candle of faith, to remind us to have faith in each other, to like to strive to be people of love and mercy and compassion Because when we do, when we work as a team, as friends, we can do amazing things. We can be God's presence of healing and love in the world. And so, my friends, let us give thanks to God for the gift of our lives and present to him our needs and our concerns. 
So let us pray for the gift of friendship in our lives, that we may strive to be people of goodness and care and community and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for all those who suffer from paralysis of the body. Many, many years ago, um, there was a another disease in addition to you know, like we have COVID-19 now, but there used to be a disease called polio, which uh, impacted young people and left them paralyzed. My own grandfather was uh, impacted by polio. And, and some of those people like are still with us today. They still feel that experience or the, ex the effects of that experience. So let us pray for all those who may have a um, physical disability that they may not only experience healing but also the support and care that they need to flourish as human persons we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer let us pray for the sick you know because sickness can be of the body but it can also be when our sometimes when for those who suffer from mental illness depression or more serious um, psychological concerns. It can be um, of the spirit. You know, people feel disconnected from God or others or even themselves from their own bodies. Let's pray for them, for all the sick, that they may experience healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for um, all of our healthcare workers, our doctors, our nurses, our scientists who are working so hard to bring an end to COVID-19 that they may be sustained in their works of charity and healing and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for those who have died, my friends. We may have loved ones who are in the kingdom of heaven. We know that they are embraced by Jesus in his endless and bountiful love, that they may be at peace. And we pray for um, those who mourn their loss, that they may be comforted by Jesus' promise to draw us all into the communion of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather together all our prayers and offer them to you, we ask you to answer them according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my friends, that was, do you remember what part of that, ma of the, that part of the Mass was? It's called the Liturgy of the Word, because we read from the Bible, we reflect upon it, and then we share God's, we share prayers with God. And now, what is the second part called? The Liturgy of the Eucharist. Yes, very good. So we will get our Eucharist set up here. So once again, we have our Paul. We have our corporal, which is meant to catch the crumbs of Jesus. It also signifies that this space is like a special space, like it's a holy space. Here, once again, is our paten, with our, which is at the moment just bread. This is unleavened bread. The purificator, which we use to w clean the chalice. Move this over a bit. And then this, of course, is called the Roman Missal, which is the giant book of prayers that we use for the liturgy of the Eucharist. Oops. Let us begin, my friends. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Now we take a little wine, pour it into the chalice. 
And we're doing this because this is what Jesus did when he celebrated the Last Supper, the meal he had with his friends just before he underwent his cross, death, and resurrection. And we do it because he told us to. He said, do this in memory of me. And he promised that when we would do it, that he would be present to us, which is why we believe that the bread and the wine becomes the Eucharist, the presence of Jesus himself. And then he feeds us with his very life and gives us eternal life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Now we wash our hands. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at, our, at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So now, my friends, we have the most important part of the Mass, the Epiclipsis, which is when the Holy Spirit is going to come down and transform the bread and the wine into the body and blood, the, the presence and the life of Jesus. So because this is a very special moment, we try to quiet ourselves because the Holy Spirit is a sensitive friend. And let us ask the, invite the Holy Spirit to come by thinking of people in our lives whom we love because the Holy Spirit is love itself. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again And now, my friends, we say four little prayers. One, calling to mind Jesus' cross, death, and resurrection. His Last Supper, that we belong to the universal church throughout the whole world, and then we pray for those who have died, our friends in heaven. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Richard our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Catherine, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so, my friends, when Jesus came, which is what Christmas is all about. The Word of God has become incarnate, become a human person. Jesus did so so that we may be a part of his divine family of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so through the gift of baptism, his Father becomes our Father. And so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, my friends, and with your spirit. Let us share with one another the bow of peace. Peace, my friends. Peace. Peace. So now, my friends, we, we normally don't say this out loud, but now we're going to take the Eucharist and we break it in half. And then we take off that little piece, which symbolizes our communion with the bishop. 
and we put it into the chalice. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And so now, my friends, there's a little prayer that the priest says quietly to himself, but I'll say it out loud so that you can hear it. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. And I love that prayer, my friends, because that's what the Eucharist is in our lives. It's a healing medicine. So no matter what, no matter what has happened to us, the choices we may have bad, made, either good or bad, Jesus, his presence in our life is always a healing one. And so that's why we refer to the Eucharist as a healing medicine. Once again, one of the images that we use for Jesus is the Lamb of God, because as I kind of mentioned last time, the Jewish people were saved by uh, the use of a lamb. They put, would take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorposts, and they were, it was helped them to be saved from a plague. So that's why I refer to Jesus as the Lamb of God, because he saves us from sin and death. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So, my friends, as your priest, I will receive the Eucharist on your behalf. And so I would like you to think of someone, it can, it can even be yourself, um, who needs some healing in their life. And as I receive this Eucharist, it will be for that person and for you, um, that, that you and them may experience healing and peace. the body of Christ. Amen. Let's now take a moment, my friends, to Say a prayer for that person that we are holding in, or people that we are holding in our heart and ask the Holy Spirit to be with them and bless them. So now, my friends, before we have the closing prayer, I'll show you how we clean the vessels because normally we do this after the Mass, but I want you to see it so that you kind of know how we do it. So because the Eucharist is so special, we want to make sure that all of it has been consumed. So we use the purificator like this, and then if there's any like fragments or crumbs of Jesus, we make sure to wipe them off. I'll just kind of show it to you on this side so you can see. over. So go like this. Gently. And we 
go. And then we take a little water. We pour it around the sides. Then we take the chalice on the purificator and we roll it so that the water collects all of the blood of Christ, the, the consecrated wine, and the crumbs of Jesus, the body of Christ, and then we consume it. And we do this because even the smallest presence of Jesus in the world is holy. And yeah, it's a way we honor um, how special the gift is of receiving Jesus. Let me put the Paul back. book. There we go. So my friends, before we have our closing prayer, I just want to say thank you so much for um, celebrating the Mass with me today. I'm sorry that I couldn't do it uh, with you live. I have um, another, I have a doctor's appointment that I have to go to. Um, otherwise, I totally would have done this live for you over Teams. But nonetheless, I wanted to see you and spend time with you. Uh, so let us pray for one another, um, especially as we await the coming of the newborn King. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven, and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you abundantly, my friends, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Bye.